Hi. Well, I'm Jen Miller. I'm the director of the League of Women Voters. I want to thank Catherine and Mia and all the folks, the Common Cause, who are working hard uh, behind the scenes. Um, we're going to just talk about testifying at the State House, specifically regarding HJR1 or SJR2. Those are the efforts to make ballot initiatives harder. Um, we'll get into what those proposals are and some tips for best practices. But let's keep in mind that it's ballot initiatives that uh, that we have had the right to take our clipboard since 1912 and, and bring policies to the people by ballot box um, to address issues that affect our daily lives. Um, and it's, it's an incredible issue. And as you see, it's about a lot of different things. It's 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 you know they might want to make it about one issue or another issue, but it's it's about um, conservation. Mm -hmm. It's about human rights. It's you about for yourself. Oh, yeah. I'm just going to mute everybody. Just jumping in to say I'm going to mute everyone, and I'm going to actually um, not allow you to unmute yourselves. And Jen, you're just going to give me a little heads up, and then I'll I'll unmute you. Okay. And through um, just right. great, there you thank go. you. So it's about a lot of different ways that ballot initiatives are used to uh, affect our daily lives. So our agenda is this a uh, little bit awkward welcome. <laughs> And we're going to hear from our uh, dear friends of mine, Kayla Griffin from All Voting is Local, Dennis Willard from We Are Ohio, and we're going to round it out with some best practices from Matt Smith. Uh, so let's head to the next slide. So what do we have next week? We The Constitutional Resolutions Committee, which is a new committee this year, this uh, legislative cycle, will be meeting in room 116. There's a new chair, uh, Rep. Phil Plummer from Dayton. The Tuesday hearing is at 9 a.m. That's for proponent or interested party. Um, we think there could be an amendment. And then Wednesday, again, at 9 a.m., and this is for opponent testimony, it's marked for a vote. Remember that all witness testimony should be into the chairman's office um, 24 hours in advance. Here is the address. Um, and if you want someone to look at yours, I think a lot of us on this call will be willing to do it. Just please give us a, a fair amount of time. Um, and with that, I'm um, pleased to get to introduce Kayla Griffin. Um, Kayla is with All Voting is Local. Uh, she does a lot of different kinds of things um, with the um, Norman S. Minor Bar Association, with the Cleveland NAACP. She has her JD and her MPA. Um, and she's a graduate of both Cleveland State and Kent State. So um, hardworking, brilliant Ohioan. Kayla, can you tell us what's going on with this? What, what's in the what's in the proposal? Yeah, so um, good afternoon, everybody. Thank you guys for joining us um, and jumping in. We hope to see you at the State House. And if we can't, then we hope to get your um, we hope to get your testimonies for submission. Um, this is really alarming because HJR1 would essentially reshape what we know about democracy. Um, what we understand in our current democracy is that everybody has a vote. And when I go to show up, my vote counts as a person. And, you know, we look at our majority rule when we are in our electoral system. But this would change that. And so what they... The most egregious thing that, you know, we should be offended at is that it would require a 60% vote to approve any constitutional amendment. And I, I think, you know, we really should be offended as Ohioans and as folks who live in a democracy that our lawmakers would try to change something that has been steeped in our constitution where we, we live by a majority rule, so a 50 plus one, but they would try to change it to 60. Um, before it even got to a, the ballot though, I think it's important to um, kind of earmark that it will also require um, signatures from all 88 counties instead of the 44 counties. So it, it increases the threshold of signatures that a person would need to get in order to even 
have something get on the ballot, to make it on the ballot. And for anybody who has collected signatures, they know that that is not an easy process. Um, it is very difficult. And so, you know, a cushion of 44 counties versus 88 counties um, is preferred, but um, they would increase it to make sure that we would need to get um, signatures from all 88 counties and that it will re require 60% vote of all the folks coming to the ballot to vote on whatever election day, whether it's, you know, prime, whenever it would come on the ballot. So in November or primary, that 60% of the electors um, would have to approve it. This is important. And I was talking to Catherine yesterday about just simple math and, you know, whether our messaging was on or not, but I'm, I'm going to try to make this, um, I'm going to try to make this as elementary as possible, right? That means if 100 people go out to vote, 60% of the people, 60 people would need to vote to approve the amendment as opposed to 40 or at 40%, um, or excuse me, as opposed to 50 plus one. So you need 60 instead of 51. And that's egregious because our ballot initiatives don't usually get 60%. And we live in a democracy that says that the majority of the voters should be able to control how our constitution is shaped. And instead of having a majority rule, now we would say that a minority of the population could defeat a really good ballot initiative and something that the majority wants simply because we cannot meet the threshold. And so that's super important for us to understand and recognize. And as we are um, uh, writing our testimony, we should highlight that. It is really important to help people understand that we don't want to live in a, a system where the minority um, is able to defeat any and everything that comes before us simply because we cannot meet the threshold. And so additional signatures required from 88 counties, that's the first component, and then a 60% threshold for the approval of a ballot initiative. That's what you really need to know, and that's what you really need to remember when we're going into this. And with that, I'll hand it over. So, so Jen needs to be unmuted. Um, and there is a question, Jen, here. I'm going to read it out while you're being unmuted. Um, this is from Andrea Goda, who has to, she's, she's just asking about what's going on with the August special election. What's the difference between the House and the Senate? And how are things coming together? And what's going on with uh, Speaker uh, Stevens? Yeah, so I, <laughs> there's a lot in there, Andrea. The first thing I would say is we're expecting some sort of amendment on Tuesday that could be about adding August special election information in. It also could be about something else entirely. We don't uh, really know. Um, so I think we will have a lot more of that information after the Tuesday and Wednesday hearings. Um, but with that, I want to go ahead and now introduce Dennis Willard. I'm hoping he is on. Dennis uh, is someone I've known for a long time. He was a uh, state house. Oh, wait, this look actually looks like this is Matt Smith. So instead, we're going to have Matt Smith jump on first. Oh, so, so it may be there's not a slide here for Dennis. Okay. Right. All right. Well, how about we, since we got these slides up, how about we just go ahead and go with it? And I'm going to introduce instead Matt Smith, uh, who uh, you, hopefully you guys know Matt. He's been around the state house for a long time. He was a legislative aide. He's now with the Ohio AFL CIO. I was going to look up your bio and try to be official, Matt Smith, but uh, I didn't have time so, uh, because of where we flipped this. So uh, he's a proud dad. He's a, he's a good friend to voters. And how about you tell us some best practices for submitting testimony? Yeah, thanks, Jen. Thanks for having me on. And I'll, I'll be brief. Um, just want to let folks know kind of the process for submitting testimony. As you'll see on your screen, um, you know, we step one is obviously writing your testimony, hopefully using the message guidance that have been that's been provided by uh, your various organizations. 
Uh, step two is emailing your written, or even if you're going to give it in person, you need to email your testimony to the chair's office at least 24 hours in advance. Uh, if you can do it in more than 24 hours, I'm sure that would be preferred by the chair's office. Uh, but if you do, uh, if you can't do it within 24 hours, the chair does reserve the right to not let you testify. So you'll definitely want to get both your testimony and the, a completed witness slip form uh, in the email to the chair's office in, with 24 hours notice. Um, if you're only doing written testimony, you're done. Once you send that email, you're, you're good to go. Uh, it'll get submitted into the record. If you're testifying in person, hey, you just, you got to show up. Uh, next slide, please. Um, so, so what makes a good testimony? I, and, and just on showing up, I would make sure since the hearing's at 9 a.m. to show up, uh, you know, 30, 20 to 30 minutes early. You'll have to go through state house security, uh, travel light, because you'll have to go through um, uh, metal detectors uh, or get wanted by uh, the, the officers there at the front. Um, so yeah, show up in plenty of time, uh, especially if you don't know the state house that well. That well. Uh, it can be a confusing place. There's lots of nice people around that can help guide you to the correct room, but you want to just give yourself plenty of time to make that happen. Uh, so what makes a good testimony? Uh, in this case, the chair is limiting testimony to five minutes. Uh, but you always want to be short and sweet with your testimony. Um, you know, I would focus on no more than three key points. Uh, give examples of how this if issue affects you and uh, others, friends, family, coworkers. Uh, definitely consider your audience. You know, think think of your crazy Uncle Joe during Thanksgiving. You know, the the, the most conservative relative that you have. That's your audience in this general assembly this legislature has moved really sharply to the right uh over the last six to eight years um so definitely know your audience uh something and i'll bring it up um something that we heard after or after the first round of hearings in december uh, again this is all about knowing your audience when folks got up there and introduced themselves using personal pronouns that immediately turned off the right wingers. Uh, and in fact, uh, Secretary of State LaRose and Representative Brian Stewart were heard after the hearing saying that when folks do that, it's actually doing their jobs, uh, making their jobs easier. Um, so I, I would just, this is a really important point. Consider your audience, know who you're talking to, who you're trying to convince. Um, be respectful. You know, don't don't be threatening. There's no need to yell. Uh, I know a lot of us are angry and we think that even going through this exercise is ridiculous and an affront to voters. Um, but, you know, you, you want to do your best not to yell. Yell. You don't want to give them a club to beat us over the head with, essentially. Um, they have used uh, uh, loud protests and stuff like that uh, in the past as a reason to push these types of bills. Um, there's a real, a real feeling in this legislature of owning the libs. Uh, so don't let them own the limbs, the libs. libs. Be respectful uh, and, and you know, be courteous and show the process uh, its due respect. Um, with questions, you know, don't be afraid. You don't know. We, we are not all experts on everything. Uh, you know, we probably won't have that many constitutional uh, experts speaking at these at these hearings. So don't be afraid to say that you don't know or that you'll get back to them. Um, you can you can always offer to follow up with the representative uh, that um, you know you can get that information to them or to their office at a later time. Uh, and then just a little quirky thing, uh, and, and it's, again, out of respect, all communication and conversation needs to go through the chair's chair, through the chairman's chair. Uh, and what that means is when you are asked a question by a representative, I'm going to use Representative Charles as an example. Uh, when you're responding to that question, you should say, thank you, Representative, for that question uh, through the chair. Uh, here's my response, right? 
Uh, so always thank them for their questions and then always send your response through the chair. Even though you're looking at Representative Jarls, um, you're, communi you're actually communicating through the chair to Representative Jarls. I hope that makes some sense. Jen, if you want to jump in there and uh, help clean that up at all. It's, it's just a nice, again, it goes back to being respectful of the process um, and, and um, yeah, yeah, just being cordial. And then next slide. Um, mentioned earlier, you know, these, we were expecting these hearings to be pretty long. Um, so, so bring, um, you know, bring some water, bring some snacks. Uh, again, travel light though, because you will have to go through the metal detector. Uh, just some quick suggestions for giving in-person testimony. Again, I can't stress this enough. Always be respectful and courteous, even though, again, what they're doing is not respectful or courteous. Um, righteous ind indignation can be very persuasive, but is often received better if delivered calmly. Uh, number two, tell your story. Again, you're not an expert, or well, maybe some of you are, but not everyone uh, will be experts on the Constitution, uh, but you are part of this growing coalition of folks who are going to fight back uh, and def defeat this thing. You know, speak from the heart, make it super personal about why you care about one person, one vote, uh, and majority rule uh, in general. Um, let them know that the citizen initiative process, why it's important to you. And not necessarily through the lens of an issue that's happening this year or an issue that might happen next year, because this this is an affront to voters. It is an affront to democracy. It's not about one issue, regardless of of if folks uh, on their side of the aisle want to make it about one issue. This is about all issues. It's about abortion. It's about uh, minimum wage. It's about redistricting. Again, it's about all issues, not just one single issue. Uh, let them know why Ohio and voting rights uh, matter to you. Uh, number three, remember you have five minutes, but that doesn't mean that you have to rush, necessarily rush through your testimony. Uh, I have a feeling that with this new chairman, we'll have a little bit of flexibility on that five minute piece, unless we're going into hour five and six at that point, they might start being a little bit more rigid with the five minutes. But again, practice at home, time yourself, see, uh, make sure that you get it uh, when you're speaking slowly and calmly. Uh, that you get it down to around five minutes because you don't want to uh, eat up too much more time than that. Uh, number four, again, be prepared for long hearings. These meetings in particular will last multiple hours, I have no doubt. Uh, bring water, light snacks, as I mentioned before, and then try to give yourself as much time as possible to be present. Uh, since these hearings are starting at 9 a.m., I'm guessing at this point, you know, three, four, five hour long hearings. It is very clear that they're serious about trying to move these things next week. Uh, so I think they're going to stay in those rooms as long as they have to, to move the process along. And then number five, uh, relax and breathe. Remember, these folks, while they're sitting up there in their fancy suits, um, you know, can be a little intimidating. They work for us. They work for you. Uh, own that podium. It's it's your podium. It is your five minutes to tell them and explain to them why this is so important to you, um, um, and that that voting rights matter to everyone. Um, you know, and and repeating myself a little bit from the last slide again. If you don't know the answer to a question, don't be afraid to say I don't know, uh, and would uh, be able to get back with your office at a later time. Um, and you. I was just going to say, Matt, one of the things we sometimes see is that the lawmakers will not ask Catherine or Matt or Mia, yeah. or Kayla or I the question. They want to ask folks. I've even had them ask about the League of Women Voters mission to other people than the League of Women Voters. So, um, you know, just don't don't fall for that. They're, they're trying to intimidate you. Um, and it's great to, you know, reference someone else in the room or say you'll get back to them. That's better than trying to answer and then them catching you. Uh, yeah. I like I think we have all this already. I think you did a good job going through all that. 
Matt. Yep. Yep. Again, 24 hours, submit your testimony 24 hours in advance. Uh, make sure that you submit a witness information form, which I think Mia put in the chat. Um, and then, yeah, yeah, this is this is just repeating uh, the last two slides. So I think I'm ready to pass it back to you, Jen. All right. Well, thank you. I do think thinking about your most conservative relative matters, we're trying to think about our goal, right? Our goal right now is to not have this get out of committee. Yep. And if it gets out of committee, our next goal is for them to not have enough votes. Let's keep in mind that, yep, some Republicans started this fight, but for the math says that Republicans have to finish the fight. And so um, I want to now bring in Dennis Willard. Um, he has been a state house reporter uh, for 20, over 20 years. Um, and he has worked on a number of campaigns and he's a good friend. He's also a great friend of voters here in Ohio. Dennis, what advice do you have for us about messaging? Well, you know, I, I want to say one thing. I think we have really strong messaging. And I do think that the, the points that have been made about um, talking about how this affects you personally, because right now, as you're hearing this, if you're feeling some sort of emotion toward it, then try to channel that emotion as you're speaking with while still staying within the parameter of being professional and respectful, as Matt has uh, said. Um, the thing is, is I know I, I want you to ask this question yourselves. You don't have to answer this, but ask this to yourself as as I as I uh, put it out there. Have you ever said or heard someone say to you that we lose because we don't have good messaging, and the other side's better at messaging than us? Well, I think we have really great messaging on this because we have the truth, and uh, and it's emotional value laden messaging which is the best messaging. And so the question here is then, can we be disciplined with our message? Because that's the thing that the other side does. They take an idea and they run it into the ground so that it permeates into the consciousness of the electorate. And so I wanna talk a little bit about messaging. What and probably a lot of you have seen message triangles before. And this is the message triangle we've been working with pretty much since lame duck. And keep in mind, we've beat this twice. When I say we, I'm talking about everybody on this call and the uh, 212 organizations, very diverse organizations that have come together to fight this. We beat it. We beat it in lame duck when they said it couldn't be done. And when they were gonna put it in January by February 1st on the ballot in May, we beat it then. And until they vote this out of committee and off of the House and Senate floor, I believe we can beat this. So when you go in there, and if you are going to testify, or if you're just going to show up, and if you don't want to testify, please show up, because we have to show that we have the people on our side. And that's what this messaging is really about. Um, I always talk about messaging like a sandwich. You hear about a message frame and the frame in this case is the bottom piece of bread when you're making that sandwich and our frame is unfair undemocratic unpopular unnecessary there's a logic behind that frame if we do eventually go to the ballot we're going to have a no vote so we want to right now be raising a lot of doubt about this because people going into the voting booth if they have any hesitation at all, if they're not sure, they will vote no. And so that's in our favor to start getting a negative message out about this issue. At the same time, a positive message out about empowering us as voters to stand up for our rights and our freedom. So that sandwich, that piece of bread, is unfair, undemocratic, unpopular, unnecessary. If you're putting your testimony together, please try to use one or all of those words in your testimony. You may say, you may feel that this is undemocratic. And so that may be the theme of your testimony or your written, whatever you submit in writing. Um, you may think that it's unpopular. You may think it's unnecessary. And by the way, it is unnecessary. Um, but and that's the best thing about our messaging. It's all true. Now, the second part of, uh, of this is the three points. And that is this 
This now we're starting to get into making the sandwich and you can make the sandwich any way you want, but here are your ingredients for the sandwich. That's the message triangle. So the, the one point on the message triangle is this undermines the sacred principle of one person, one vote. The other is freedom and rights. And the other is the bad guys, the extreme out of touch politicians. Now, again, I'm gonna go back to Matt and if you are going to use that talking point in your message, then please be respectful as you talk about extreme out of touch politicians, because that's someplace where you could start to have your emotion overtake you. But let's go to undermines the sacred principle of one person, one vote, because I think this is our strongest message going into next week. And again, you're making your sandwich. So you might say something like, I believe that this is undemocratic. Why? Because it undermines the sacred principle of one person, one vote. It ends majority rule in Ohio as we know it. And we'll get you this message triangle for you to have. It allows a small amount, 41% of the voters, to block initiatives that the majority want. And now we use, we, we developed this messaging by sort of, you know, having some experience in Ohio, but we also worked with the Fairness Project, who won in two ballot initiatives last year in Arkansas and South Dakota, of all places, against this kind of initiative. And they've done a lot of polling, too. So this isn't just messaging that's made up and, you know, we thought would sound good. There's there's some, uh, uh, some work behind it. Um, here's a really good, here's a really good idea. It shreds our constitution. It shreds our constitution. And this takes away your right to decide what happens. Um, so that, so you could make a sandwich with that and you could start it by just saying, if you just wanted to make three, say three sentences, your sandwich could say, I oppose House Joint Resolution 1 because it undermines the sacred principle of one person, one vote, and that's undemocratic. There's, there is your message right there. But let's go to the second uh, point on this message triangle, which is freedom and rights. And this is another place. This is all value-laden emotional language that you should use. And this is where you can really talk about what your vote means to you. One person, one vote. As Kayla so said so well, this really, really undercuts that idea. I mean, you walk into a voting booth, you don't want your vote to count for less than one vote, one whole vote. So this protects our freedom to determine our future. We all want the freedom to make decisions that affect our lives. This takes away our right to decide what happens and ballot initiatives allow us to exercise that freedom. And I know Jen put in the chat that she loves to quote Republicans back to Republicans. I love using the freedom and rights frame here because they don't have a monopoly on morality, on anything. On patriotism. They have, and they, they don't, don't have, have a monopoly, monopoly on, on any of those things. Rights. Right. And so, you know, speak up for that. Speak up. The, these are your rights. This is your freedom. And then let's go to the extreme out of touch politicians, because I think this is the tricky part where you're respectful, but it, because you're going to be talking to extreme out of touch politicians, by the way, <laughs> when you're using this message. But let me just go through this and then let's talk about it. And if anybody has any questions, uh, we're here for however long you want, because first of all, somebody put in the chat, this is when there was like 20 some people. It's Friday afternoon, beautiful weather, and we got 50 people on here. You're almost making me cry the commitment you're making to this. So thank you so much. But extreme out of touch politicians. Politicians don't like the decisions we've made, so they wanna rewrite the rules so they can get what they want instead of what the people want. And that's so true. That's what they're doing here. They're rigging the game to win. Now we know, we know they're rigging the game because they've admitted it because of the pro-choice ballot initiative that's coming in November. But I will say this, I never give my enemy a club with which to beat me, okay? And, we won in lame duck and we won in January because 
we took our front burner issues, these things that we're passionate about. And I know there's so many people on this call right now that have these issues that you get up and you live and breathe 24 hours a day. And God bless you for that and for being out there and fighting for those progressive ideas. But we do not want to stray from our message discipline here, which is this is about not a single issue. This is about our right to determine what goes on in our state through the power of our one person, one vote. And it, so we asked everybody in lame duck and in January, please take your front burner issue and put it on the back burner because if we lose this, those front burner issues you care so deeply about are going to be almost impossible to achieve if you have to go the constitutional route. And they know that. So um, special interests and lobbyists are pushing this constitutional amendment because they can't control they can control politicians, but they can't control you and others. They're talking about special interests. By the way, they are the special interests protecting themselves here. We are the people protecting the interest of all people. And then they're getting rid of ballot initiatives means more power for them and less power for voters to decide the issues that matter most. I think that if you don't use the phrase extreme out of touch politician, but if you just talk about politicians wanting to consolidate power, if you talk about special interests, and if you talk about getting rid of ballot, I like that third point here, the most of these three, getting rid of ballot initiatives means more power for them and less power for voters like you sitting before them to decide the issues that matter most. Let's face it, sometimes the legislature is out of sync with society, without out of sync with our communities. And this direct democracy route we have in Ohio is precious. It's precious, and we're not going to give it up without a, a battle. Now, again, all of these things go back to our frame. Unfair, undemocratic, unpopular, unnecessary. So if you want to talk about freedom and rights, you could say, you know, I really think this is unfair. I should have the right to go to the ballot and determine what's best for me, along with other people in this state. And it should be a simple majority 50 plus one vote to do that. Otherwise, that's just unfair. So I just made a sandwich there with the message in the middle. Um, so, anyway, I'm going to finish Dennis, up. And, yes. There's been conversation, so I just want us to get clear on this. And I think Mia is going to pull up a witness slip because we had a couple questions about that. Yeah. Thank you, Mia. Um, so this uh, we have heard and we have seen in writing that the proponents of this have linked this to abortion. And tell us what happens to uh, to uh, opposition to this when it gets linked to abortion. Yeah, we, we've looked at polling here. This is why they did this. If you recall, when they started this in lame duck, Frank LaRose and Brian Stewart had a press conference and said this was about keeping special interests and dark money out of the process and hijacking our constitution for special interests, et cetera. Well, in 2015, the voters went to the uh, ballot put an amendment in our Ohio constitution to stop casinos and others from using the and carving out specific portions of the constitution. That's why this is unnecessary. That was the ruse they started with. But then I think they did some polling because we've done polling on this. And they know that when they do polling, that if they talk about abortion, it helps them. It helps them and it hurts us. So I just want to say to you again, I, I signed the petition. I'm going to vote uh, for the pro-choice amendment, but I will tell you, I want to be able to vote on that amendment as a 50 plus one, and I don't want to give them a club to hit me with on this. So if we get into an abortion debate on this next week, then they will win. They will, they will, they will get the upper hand. They already have the upper hand with a supermajority in the legislature. And so we've got to do our best. And again, going back to the question I asked, if you ever asked yourself why Democrats don't win, we need to stay on message. 
we need to have message discipline next week. So if the abortion issue comes up, my advice to you would be to say, that's absolutely an important issue that voters in Ohio should have the right to um, vote on with a simple 50 plus majority. But this issue is far, far, far larger than that. This affects everything. Everything that we do as a voter, you're taking my power as a voter away and then go back to the messaging that we have here. Thank you. Now I'm gonna to toss it over to Mia. I'm sure a lot of you know her, the extraordinary Mia Lewis of Common Cause. She's gonna just help us answer some of these questions on the witness information form. And then we'll get to some of these other questions and comments as well. Hi, thanks, Jen. So just really quickly, um, so if you were to edit this, then it would be edited for the next person who came to look at it. So rather than using this exact form yourself, just go over to this file menu like that and then say, make a copy and then click on make a copy. And then you can give yourself a new name for your new document. You make a copy, <clears throat> it pops up <laughs> again, um, and then you can fill it out the easiest thing to do when you've filled it out um, is uh, to save it as a PDF, uh, download it as a PDF, and then um, you're going to send that PDF along with the PDF of your testimony into um, the chairman, the committee chairman. So um, don't ask us for permission to edit the document. Just go ahead and make a copy, fill it out, download it. Um, PDF is probably the easiest way to do it. And then um, there you go, you're all set. I hope that's clear. Um, if anyone has any questions, just go ahead and, and, and send us an email. Um, and then if you wanna scroll, there's like a reason and someone had a question about the reason or what your, briefly state your position. You can literally just say opposition to HJR1 or opposition to SJR2, whatever committee you're in or whatever bill that is. That was one question we had. Thank you for that. Um, let's talk about, Kath, Kathy Gage had a really great point in that they oppose easily being able to amend the constitution. That's actually our um, unnecessary talking point. And um, the goddess of goodness, Catherine Turser, do you wanna to talk to us about you know, and, and others can jump in as you want about like how hard it already is to amend the constitution and why that's BS. Um, so I often make a joke about this, but I want to be very clear. It's both a joke and completely true. I've gotten a divorce. I was in a car accident and I had to relearn to walk. I had cancer. Nothing is worse than doing a ballot measure and ensuring you have enough signatures and all of the things that go into it. The responsibility is incredibly, it's just so time consuming. It's so hard. It's also so incredibly important, right? Like we do it because the state house can be a really hard place to make significant change. You know, redistricting reform, fair districts, fair elections, creating, you know, you know, if you manipulate the district lines, you're manipulating public policy. It is absolutely worth it to go to the ballot, but it is incredibly challenging. Did anyone uh, who's here today uh, work, uh, you know, at Petition Central or drop off petitions um, in 2017? I mean, it, yeah, it's just hot, miserable work where you're doing the validation and people don't know what county they live in. And like, it, it's just incredibly challenging. And it's one of the reasons why I am so impressed by all the reproductive rights folks that are out there collecting yeah. signatures because it is hard work. And so folks who were like, oh, it's so easy. Well, if it were so easy, we would have more ballot measures, right? The last one was in 2018. The last successful ballot measure was in 2017. Now, you know, whenever they're like, oh, we, they're, they're just so many of them. Well, we haven't had one for more than five years. I think we shouldn't be too worried about it. And I, I want to be super clear, you know, 
it is so worth going to the ballot, but it is incredibly hard work. It takes so many people. And so we definitely should do it. But we should also like whenever they, they suggest it's so easy peasy, they're insane. And also whenever there's a suggestion, <laughs> whenever there's a suggestion that, you know, um, you know, if we make it really hard, this will dissuade the special interests. No, the only people who will be able to afford to do it will be special interests with a ton of money. Thank the you. The way that you know, fair districts came together and basically was doing everything on a shoestring. Or when we think back to 2012, yes, we were blessed to have, we'll say adequate resources, but not crazy amount of money. And the money was coming from inside Ohio. So, you know, you'll notice I'm very impassioned about this. I might not do this when I'm testifying, but I would be super clear. Well, no, they're mistaken. There are many years where we don't have a single citizen initiative. It is yeah. unnecessary to do this. And we can, uh, I think um, we have some other historical writings. If someone can pull those up, um, our friend Mike Curtin has done so many that can talk about how hard they are and what those stats are. So maybe Dennis or Mia or someone has those and put those in the chat and you can look at those, which was one of Andrew Cohn's questions. Um, I just wanted to quickly mention that another thing we often talk about is that if they're worried about things going in the Constitution that shouldn't be there, they could, you know, citizens also have the opportunity to do a statute or a law. Um, and the reason why we don't is because it's about the same amount of signatures, it's about the same amount of money, and the Ohio General Assembly could overturn that win at the ballot box just with pure legislation. So part of our argument here is that, well, if you want to protect the constitution, do that, make the statutory process easier, reduce the number of signatures and, and put in a safe haven so it cannot be overturned. Um, let's go to, cause that's the gambling and there's a lot of other things like that. We'll get some points about Mike um, from Mike Curtin that I think are very good. Um, another one of the, maybe we could also put the bond issue, uh, fact sheet in there in the chat, because that'll tell us about like school construction and, and conservation projects. Oh, there's a whole bunch of things that have been passed through this process at a 60% or less at about 60% or less. So I think th that community development, um, really thinking about main street, thinking about how, our, our small towns need, you know, um, infrastructure projects, things like that to thrive, I, I think would be very good. Um, Matt, I uh, wanted to ask you, we do have a, a, a frustrating announcement out of the Senate as we sit here. Um, can you tell us what's going on now in the Senate? No? Yep, no, I can't, I was waiting to unmute. Um, so we just got word uh, a little while ago that the Senate will be holding their third hearing on Tuesday, I think at two o'clock on SJR2, Senate Bill 92, um, and, and holding a vote in committee that afternoon. They're scheduled to be uh, in the Senate, uh, have Senate session on Wednesday. Um, and it sounds like they'll, they'll likely move Senate Joint Resolution 2 to the floor Wednesday afternoon. Um, so, yeah, yeah we'll have sim simultaneous kind of activity in the chambers. Now, strategically, friends, we always knew that there was more support in the Senate because this is something Matt Huffman really wants. So our play and focus has been on the House because in the House, we're still hearing that it might not make out a committee let alone pass on the floor. And so if you wanna attend both hearings, do that. If you can only testify in one place, let's do that in the house. Yes. Um, if you can only attend one set of hearings, prioritize the house. Um, certainly call your um, senators as well as your state reps, but, but I think we wanna to continue to focus on the house. Um, oh good, we've got some really great things coming um, to us here, Bonds of Built Ohio. Does that is that opening for folks? If not, I'll send it to Mia, and she can send it around to everyone. 
Yeah, so I think I shared a link that was the one that was from the press conference you did. Perfect. Thank so you. if you great. And I'm going to start throwing in more curtain op-eds while folks are talking. And I, I bet we could send in an email with just links to all these various things so that you have lots of different talking points. It's really great to stick within that frame. Um, and, and for those of you that are really working hard on, on the pro-choice amendment or are fervently pro-choice, one of the things we can do is stand in solidarity with that effort by defending uh, against HJR1, SJR2. Um, and so uh, other questions or comments, um, should we talk now, should we talk about the special election? So HJR1 doesn't have the special election in there, which is why we weren't talking about that, Andrew. Um, it was a separate piece of legislation. We don't know if that's what's going to get added by amendment on Tuesday. If so, certainly feel free to talk about that. Um, Dennis, do you have comments or thoughts? I know that the voter advocates certainly do about special elections um, or Matt, um, but should we be talking about those as well? I, you know, this is what I would say is I, I know that we're all upset about the special election. Uh, the special election laws are not going to pass unless they get these resolutions passed out of committee. Our goal here, if we can stop this by May 10th, the resolutions, then we can stop this. Um, I, I, you have five minutes on Tuesday or Wednesday when you testify. Um, my recommendation would be to stick to this. If someone brings up the special election, I would just point out, I, the, I think the best thing we could say is the, the lawmakers already made a decision on this last year. They passed a law to do away with August special elections because it's a waste of tax dollars because the voter turnout is so low. And, and this there, there's another hypocrisy here, a contradiction. Why would you, if they are saying they're protecting the Ohio Constitution with this uh, threshold, then why would you go to the smallest number of voters to protect the Constitution? Uh, it, it just, it, it's contradictory. But again, I don't think we should get into the special election. That's not on the agenda. This is the House Joint Resolution. I think we should stick to that. And then when they start having hearings on the special election, we'll go and we'll testify then and blow that up the same way we're going to do with this. Great. Any other um, comments or questions? You could also decide to talk about special election in terms of we're in this budget cycle. And there's all these things that we're deciding. Are we going to fund schools or parks or Head Start or, or you know, whatever matters to you, local government fund. And, uh, you know, so if you get pushed and asked, you could say there are better ways to use that 20 to $25 million, including voter education after um, voting laws have changed significantly. Lots of great materials coming in here on the history that should help you to, uh, write your testimony or think about your community. Um, think about, you know, maybe you can, you know of a project that was done with bonds in your community and how that benefited your community. That would be incredible. Um, other questions or comments? I would love to just hear who might, who's thinking about testifying and also keep in mind that just filling the hearing room, especially if you have a button or a sticker or, or a, a, you know, a flyer on your, on your, um, I don't know, like, what am I trying to say, folder or something that says that you are against it, that also really helps showing that support. I encourage you if you come to the state house, regardless as to whether you testify or not, to visit your state rep's office and your state senator so that they know that you came down to the state house or up to the state house to um, share your feelings about this. Um, any other comments or questions? Can I add something about what you just said, Jen? That's so important. Yeah. You know, when I was a reporter, I was reported for 23 years at the state house. Last 15, I was a bureau chief for the Akron Beacon Journal. And I talked to lawmakers all the time. And it was always uh, stunning to me that um, how the impact of one voter could have on them because they don't know whether you represent yourself, 
10 people, 100, 1,000. And, and they're, they're, they have two things when they're trying to get elected. They're trying to collect votes and they're trying not to lose votes to another person. And so I think it's really important what Jen said. If you have a chance to speak directly to your lawmaker, please do that and let them know that you are very, um, very strongly opposed to diminishing your vote. And there's, if you can't speak to your lawmaker directly, you know, talking to the aide is also highly valuable, right, Matt? Yep, yep. I would always talk to the aide. <clears throat> Those are the gatekeepers to the legislators. Uh, so I always try to keep them very happy. Okay. <laughs> we have Krista. Uh, would you like to ask your question? She's raised her hand. I can unmute Krista, or perhaps Krista could write in the chat. Yeah, would you write in the chat? That would be really great. Um, Andrew Cohn, is it okay to show up late on the 17th, or do I have to be there at 9 a.m.? If you show up late, you show up late. I mean, that's your gamble, is what I would say, Andrew. Um, so, you, uh, uh, But I think that's okay. The other thing that's okay is actually sending your testimony. If you you know, sending your testimony even at 8 a.m. that morning so that you're, they're probably not going to get to you, but it could help require another hearing. Having another hearing is good. You know, we watched them through redistricting run the clock out on us over and over and over again. Um, we can try to do the same thing. May 10th is the deadline that if it's, if they don't pass it by then, it's not on the August special. So, um, oh, and Tiffany is saying, share your testimony on social media networks. That's a great idea. And Dennis, I think if they've went through the trouble of writing their testimony, they might as well send it as a letter to the editor. That's a great idea. Just make it under what should we, we should say about a hundred words is ideal, right? 200 words or less, 200 words, around 150 is perfect. And, okay. and yes, please write letters to the editor. That's, that's great. Great idea. Great. And we're still waiting for Krista's uh, uh, comment or question in the chat. Um, anyone else? Yes, we also have the send a letter to the editor toolkit. Anyone else um, have any, anything else you can put in the chat as well? I, I had a, a recommendation. I have trouble remembering, you know, to say, re thank you. Thank you for your question, Representative Swearing Jen. And now to the chair, you know, and through the chair, like I, I struggle with this. And so one of the things I do is I say, I, I may often make it super simple and I will say, thank you. And to the chair. And I just like, especially if you're getting, you're getting yeah. a number of questions because there's a point where you're, it, it can feel super awkward. And at some point you you know, you've forgotten something, but as long as you're saying, thank you, you know, as long as you're saying thank you yep. and it's clear that you're trying to follow what they want, that don't make yourself crazy. Thank you. And Mr. Chair, super easy. And it looks like Lisa has too. something in there. Yeah, she wants to know how to get involved. So we're going to find out where she is located and we're going to get her connected with uh, folks. So that's great. Tell us where you live and what issues you're most passionate about and we will get you connected. We're glad you're here. Um, Ann says, I visited my state rep's office after HJR1. She wasn't available, but the aides fell over themselves talking to me. That's a big deal. They want to, you know, it's, they want to hear from you and just know at the same time that we're doing all this, we are, you know, we, Matt, we have some folks who are going to be making calls, right? Yep. Yep. Uh, we uh, have narrowed down a list of like 17 to 19 House Republicans that might be flippable. Uh, so we have uh, calls going in from our uh, union members into those offices, asking them to vote no on HJR1 um, and House Bill 144. And then next week, I believe a few other organizations will be joining in that effort and doing live calls through their membership list, doing the same thing, asking folks to call their legislators and tell them to vote no. Uh, these these legislators need to be hearing from us. They need to hear from us on the phones. They need to see emails from us, and they need to see us and feel us in the hallways for this effort to kill this stuff to be successful. 
Thank you. And so that's another thing. If for some reason you just can't make it down, then make calls. Ask all your yep. friends to make calls. Do that letter to the editor. Um, and it doesn't, the call doesn't have to be long. It can just be no on HJR1, no on SJR2. Um, if you want to add the undemocratic, the unfair, any of the bread parts of the sandwich, Dennis will be happy about it, but it's not necessary because they're counting those calls. And it's really awesome if, you know, the aides just have to keep saying to their lawmaker, the phone is ringing off the hook. Um, and if it's a lawmaker who you know is solidly in our camp as a solid no, we want them, they can talk about that too, right? They can talk about that in media, they can talk about that on the floor or in committee that they're getting lots of calls. Um, final word of wisdom, 30 seconds or less, Catherine. So final word of wisdom is, I'm so glad that we're all in this together. And so even though a lot of us don't do a lot of public speaking, I want us all to know when we go in there, we're doing this together. And I just wanted to say a great big thank you to you all. And then I wanna also be sure that you know that you can send us um, emails. Um, Tiffany's gonna pop in my email. So if you are like, you just have a question or you, I don't know, some problem with the witness slip or you know, how do, how do I PDF this? Any of the kind, those kinds of specific questions, um, we're here for you over the weekend, especially. So don't worry, send me, send me a note. I'm here for you. Um, Kayla, Dennis, anything else you want to go to? Yeah, Dennis, then Kayla. I don't have anything. No, I'm, I'm, I'm just, thank you. Thank you so much. I would just remind the lawmakers, like we are the people. And so when you show up, like you show up for the, we, the people. And so, you know, we should be on fire and ready to go. And in AACP, we say fired up, ready to go. All right, Matt. I'm good. I'm good. I'm so excited to see all you lovely people next week at these hearings. Super important. Yep. Thank you so much, everyone. And uh, if you have questions or challenges, let me know. Let uh, any of us know. We're here to help you. Thank you. Absolutely. Bye. Thank you. Bye, everybody. Thank you. Have a good weekend.